Hello. In this video, we're going to continue on with stage five. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate um, the value for every country um, from the JSON file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find the largest value. And then we can use that for our final, final part of this stage five. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take all the code from 5A and I'm going to paste it into 5B. And I'm going to change up here to 5B. So what we need to do first is we need to take this section of code and we need to put it inside of a loop structure. And then what we'll do is we'll change this index value to I, which is the loop counter. So to do that, I just say 4 i equals 0, i is less than 194, because we know our JSON file has 194 countries listed, i equals i plus 1, open a brace, I'm going to take everything that I want inside the loop and I'm going to tab it in, and close our brace. Unlike Python, the tabbing isn't necessary, however, it helps us read the code. So now, we want to change this to i, which is our loop counter. And if I come into here, you can see I've tried to do this already. <laughs> Restart it. I now print out the HIV infection rate of every country. But if you scroll, th scroll through here, you'll notice some funny things. You'll see this NAN. And what that means is not a number. So what, does, what, is, what is the program trying to tell us here? Well, what it's trying to tell us is essentially when we perform this parse int and we try and convert our val, which is a string at this point, into an integer, it's not a number, and it can't do it. And if we look at our, our JSON data, and here it is, so we have our JSON, this ends up in the data variable, there's our fact, and we look, for example, the value here has no data. So essentially, I'm trying to convert that into a number, and the computer doesn't know what to do with it, so it gives you the not a number. And you'll see that in a couple places, and you'll also see it if we scroll down a little bit more in situations like that, where we have less than 500. And this won't work because, you know, our algorithm to pull out just the numeric part is going to end up with this less than sign, and that will be not a number. So, we're just going to ignore that for now, but we're going to keep that in mind, and we'll see what to do with this shortly. All right, so I want to find now the largest, well, before I do this, let me actually rewind a second. So you see here how we've written in 194. That's okay, because we know that our JSON file has 194 entries, but we're better off to actually have the computer calculate the length for it, because then if for some reason some of the data is removed or more data is added, the computer will just figure it out for us. So to do that, we say, data, which is the name of our, our variable that we are getting our data in, dot fact, which is the part of the, the JSON file that we're looking for the data in, dot length. And that's going to calculate the actual length of, or the number of fact elements. So if I come over, if I save this, and come over here and run this, you'll see that there's no difference. But this is just good design when you're coding, is to have the computer calculate the length for you. An even better design here I would recommend is I would actually do this. And what this does is this actually takes the length and stores it in a variable and then uses that variable in the loop. And you might say, well, what's the difference? For our purposes, it really doesn't matter. But think of it like this. If you have a book and you want to know the number of pages in the book, Doing it this way means you have to actually open the book, go to the last page, and read the number off it. Whereas by putting it inside a variable, that's like opening the book, looking at the last page number, and then writing it down on a piece of paper. So if for some reason you have to check the length of the book 500 times, you're going to have to open that book 500 times. Whereas if you just write it down on a piece of paper, it's right there. So this is actually slightly faster than running this every time. That said, um, this really becomes important if you're dealing with really large data sets. Um, for those of you writing contest problems, it's a nice thing to kind of keep in mind and get in the habit of doing. Okay. Before we render anything to the screen, what we need to do is we need to find the largest value 
in this data set. And we're going to use a standard algorithm. Um, but um, before we go in, we need a variable to keep track of the largest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to set a variable called largest. And for now, I'm going to set it to negative 1, which in our case will work because we know that all the, the numbers are all greater than negative 1, so it, it is going to be replaced. But here's an opportunity again to do some best practice. You know, if your list was something like 1, 2, 3, and you set largest to negative 1, you know you're going to look at this list and say, okay, well, negative 1 is bigger than, sorry, 1 is bigger than negative 1, so our largest is 1, and you'll go through that and eventually get 3. But if for some reason your list only contained negative numbers, so let's say negative 4, negative 2, and negative 3, if I set largest to negative 1 at the start, and then I run through the list, the largest is going to be negative 1, which is wrong because negative 1 doesn't exist in that list. So what we tend to do is we set the largest to an element that is in the list, and therefore we know that it doesn't, we don't need to know what numbers are in there. I don't care what the biggest or smallest number is. Because the largest is set to a number of the list, it, it, it doesn't matter. So what we want to do in our case is we want to take this section that found our, our value, and before we kind of enter the loop, we're going to set, let me just pull these back a bit. There we go. Let's just clean this up a bit. So I know that the second element, which is located at index 1, has a value of 1,400. And so I'm going to set the largest to that value. And what that means is that um, I, don't, I don't have to know what the smallest or largest value is in the list. So it's really good practice to, whenever finding the largest or smallest value in a list, always set the value to a number in the list to start. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of going to get rid of this console.log here. Is inside the list is I am going to actually use a built-in function called the max function, which is located in the math class. So if I say math.max, this is a really useful function because I can pass it two things and it's going to return the largest of the two. So if I pass it largest and I pass it val, every time I calculate the new value, it's going to compare the current largest and the value and then spit out the result. So here I'm going to come in front and I'm going to say largest equals. So this is a nice way of finding the largest between two values. So what it does is I have this function called max, I pass it the largest and the current value I'm, I'm looking at, and then it's going to figure out which two of those two are bigger and then spit it out and store it in largest. So now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside the loop and I'm going to say console.log largest. Don't put this inside the loop because otherwise it's going to print out the largest every time. I only want to print out the largest once the loop is done. So let's save this. Let's come over here. Let's refresh this. And I get NAN which is not a number. So here's the problem. The problem is that, again, remember, every now and then I'm going to calculate the value, and it's going to get not a number. And it just turns out the way that the max function works is that if I pass it not a number and a value, it returns not a number as the larger value, which is odd. So what we want to do is, before calculating the largest, I want to check and make sure that the value is 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 the value is valid. And to do that, I'm going to use an if statement. So I'm going to say if, and it turns out there's this really nice function called is n a n. And I'm going to pass val in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say if is not a number is false, meaning that I pass the value into this function is nan, it would return. So let's just put a comment here. is nan, if I pass it something like 45, that would return true because, sorry, that would return false because 45 is a valid number. 
But if I say is NAN and I pass it NAN, that's going to return true. So this is a nice built-in function that will actually figure out if the variable is not a number. And then we only calculate the largest value if that's false. So let's save this. Let's give this a run. And I get 720,000. And I paused it there for a second because I noticed a little mistake. I've done a little like playing around here while I paused it because my website said that it should be 860,000, but it actually should be, and I'll just update this now, scroll down to the bottom, should be 7,200,000. There we go. And so what I did to debug this a little bit, it's a nice little just chance to show this, is I essentially, once I knew the largest, I said if val is equivalent to that, log the index and then give me the country. And that's how I got the index of 160, which is South Africa. Okay, so now we have the largest country. In our last video for this stage, what we're going to do is we're going to use that to scale everything else and print it to the screen. I hope this video helped. Have a great day.